Hi everyone, I'm John Fenzel. We're here in the town of St. Mary Glees in Normandy, France. Of course, this is a famous place because chronologically, St. Mary Glees was the first town to be liberated by the Americans. And while all that was happening, one of the American paratroopers, Private John Steele, had his parachute hung up on one of the pinnacles of the church right behind me. And we'll show you that here in a second. His story was told in the film, The Longest Day, and maybe that's why this town is so famous. But just to give you a little bit more background, the Germans arrived here four years earlier on June 18, 1940. Despite the Nazi occupation of their houses, the huge swastika flag that flew outside the town hall, there wasn't any fighting here. Over that time, the citizens of St. Mary Glace learned to live with their invaders. The number of soldiers stationed in the area began to decrease beginning in 1943. Sometimes an occasional Allied aircraft would drop leafless, but other than that, there weren't that many reminders that there was still a war on here. Early in 1944, German anti-aircraft gunners, mostly Austrians, moved in here parking their wood-burning trucks in the square right over here to our left, your right, but behaving well, and, and it was pretty evident that they weren't that enthusiastic about fighting. Lieutenant Zitt was put in charge of the town and demanded the cooperation of St. Mary Glees' mayor, uh, Alexander Renaud, in providing supplies and labor to build field defenses like the, the landing poles to prevent the airborne and the glider landings. He also ordered that all the radios be handed in to the town hall and dictated severe penalties for anybody who was listening to the BBC. I'm sure Renaud actively and passively resisted Lieutenant Zitt's demands. And then on May 10th, following Rommel's inspection of the beaches, all the Germans in St. Miraglis were moved up to the Cherbourg Peninsula. Only the Austrians remained, really quite at home and causing no trouble. During that buildup on the beaches, there was a lot of activity with soldiers continuously passing through the town to include Georgians and Mongols who didn't look at all European. Shortly after 1.30 in the morning on June 6, several platoons, two plane loads of the 82nd Airborne Paratroopers jumped in and around St. Mary Glees along with 13,000 other Airborne soldiers who jumped out of over 880 transport planes flying across Normandy. Meanwhile, on the ground, another now frequent air raid began, but to enhance the confusion even more, a large house in La Halle Park just across the way where the Airborne Museum now sits caught fire. Thinking fast, the mayor and villagers formed a human chain from this village pump right here, passing buckets of water from hand to hand to throw out those flames. As they struggled to pass the buckets quickly enough, paratroopers began to fall like confetti all amongst them. At least one paratrooper fell into that burning house just across the way. You can imagine the reactions. Soldiers from the local anti-aircraft unit under the command of an Austrian officer were firing in all directions as paratroopers dropped. One of those paratroopers, Private John Marvin Steele, was getting ready to land himself when his chute caught on the church tower. And that's where he hung helplessly, pretending to be dead so that nobody would shoot at him. All the while, bells were ringing an alarm right in his ear, deafening him. scene below John Steele was chaotic. The Germans ordered the French to go back into their houses and they shot at the Americans in the air as they fell. Many of the Americans were just riddled with bullets before they even reached the ground and those that were caught in the trees stood little chance. The 
town became a focal point of all the scattered paratroopers to gather. The fighting became just absolutely brutal on both sides. In fact, that night probably saw the most vicious fighting of the whole war on the Western Front, in addition to Lafayette Bridge, where we'll go next. The task of taking the town had been that of the 3rd Battalion of the 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Edward C. Krause. Following a good drop, on and around their planned drop zone on DZO, the colonel ordered his own men to enter St. Mary Police by stealth using knives and bayonets and where necessary grenades. The tactic worked. The Germans then launched a simultaneous attack from the north onto the remnants of the second battalion which numbered about 42 men. Most of the second battalion under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Vanderbilt established a defensive line north of the town and they moved back to help. Colonel broke an ankle on the drop, and he's featured actually in that movie, The Longest Day. He was using a stick as support, and he continued to command his battalion. When the attack and counterattack sequence finally ended, some eight hours later, only 16 of those 42 men had survived. Both colonels were awarded the Distinguished Service Cross for their conduct during the capture of St. Mary Gleeks. The medals were pinned on them in July by General Bradley himself. General Gavin was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross at that same ceremony. After two hours, John Steele was cut down from the church and he was taken prisoner, probably the last prisoner taken before active resistance in the town of St. Mary Glees ceased at 4.30 in the morning. The Austrians didn't have the stomach for a fight, so after about half an hour, they withdrew, leaving a few active soldiers here and there, and only the machine gun on top of the church was still firing. But arguably, at least, St. Mary Glees was the first town in France to be liberated. As a postscript, John Steele was one of the few not killed or wounded by the enemy fire. He later escaped from the Germans and rejoined his division when the 3rd Battalion of the 505th attacked the village, capturing 30 Germans and killing another 11. He was awarded the Bronze Star for valor and a Purple Heart. He continued to visit the town through his life and he was made an honorary citizen of St. Mary Glees. The tavern right across the street maintains his memory through the title Aubergé John Steele. There are two beautiful stained glass windows commemorating the paratroopers. Over the portal is the predominantly blue window that's designed by Paul Renaud, the son of the 1944 mayor and, and made by the glassmaker Lore. It shows the Virgin Mary surrounded by paratroopers. On the 25th anniversary of the drop in 1969, the veterans of the 82nd Airborne donated another stained glass window, which was dedicated on June 4th, 1972. It shows St. Michael, the patron saint of the paratroopers, and incorporates the Cross of Lorraine and various military insignia.